Hi, it's Katrina. From lost abandoned spy vessels to finding water on the moon, here are 10 mysterious and unexpected discoveries. Number 10. A new flying species. Roy Smith, a University of Portsmouth PhD student, recently found fossil evidence of a previously unknown prehistoric flying reptile hiding in plain sight. He spotted it in a mislabeled jar, identifying it as a shark fin skeleton. It was found in a fossil collection that had sat gathering dust at the Booth Museum in Brighton since being discovered during the 19th century by laborers who sold the artifacts for extra cash. Smith identified the object in question as the beak tip of a mysterious pterosaur species. Writer Stephen Morris noted in a Guardian article about the discovery that pterosaurs existed between 228 million and 66 million years ago and were the earliest known vertebrates to have evolved powered flight. The beak resembles that of the Alanka, a huge flying reptile that was once found in modern-day North Africa and had an estimated 13-foot wingspan. It was found among fossils from two other pterosaur specimens, which Smith identified as belonging to the Ornithostoma genus. As far as the species of the newly discovered fossil goes, in Smith's words, it is a paleontological mystery. Number 9. Biofluorescent Fur As one of only two mammals that lay eggs, the platypus is already famous for being one of the strangest creatures in the animal kingdom. But did you know that it glows? Yes. It has even more bizarre features than you knew. Its fur glows in a neon greenish-blue color underneath an ultraviolet light. This strange characteristic, called biofluorescence, sets the platypus apart from other egg-laying mammals, known as monotremes. But surprisingly, it's not the only known animal that possesses this feature. Biofluorescence has now been observed in placental New World flying squirrels, marsupial New World possums, and the monotreme platypus of Australia and Tasmania, wrote the authors of a recent study published in the journal Mammalia, who also pointed out that biofluorescent mammals are found in three continents and a diverse array of ecosystems. Besides being found in these mammals, it is found in other animals, including sea turtles, and the trait has also been detected in certain birds, fungi, flowers, insects, and fruits. The first example of biofluorescence among mammals was discovered in 1983 in North America's only marsupial, the Virginia possum. Then, in 2017, scientists accidentally noticed the feature in North America's flying squirrels, which are considered a placental species. Researchers are unsure how mammals benefit from biofluorescence. While some animals, including birds, are known to use this trait for mating purposes, this is unlikely the case for platypuses, as males and females both have it. One theory suggests that the moss-like glow that biofluorescence creates helps nocturnal mammals blend in with their surroundings, but who knows? The mystery of the platypus continues. Number 8. Unidentified Spy Boat a high-end solar-powered spy boat recently washed ashore on Tyree, a remote Scottish island that is part of the Inner Hebrides Archipelago. Beachgoers discovered the mysterious vessel situated between large rocks near a military base and contacted the Coast Guard. Only the U.S. Navy and the Royal Navy use that particular kind of boat, called a wave glider spy vessel, yet nobody has come forward to claim it. Because it is not equipped with lights, a requirement for all seafaring vessels, it's believed that someone may have used the boat for illicit purposes. One theory is that the boat is a Russian replica of the wave glider and that it was perhaps in the area to spy on the British military. Although it is true that the Russian military developed such a vessel in 2016, called the Fugu, these claims remain unsubstantiated. It makes sense that a covert spy boat would be near Tyree, which is along a route that British nuclear submarines would take while en route to the North Atlantic. For now, however, nobody knows whose watercraft it is and why or how it ended up where it did. Number 7. Hegra Also known as Mada in Sali, this ancient site was once part of the Nabataean civilization and is considered a sister city to Petra in Jordan. Located in Saudi Arabia, it is full of over 100 monumental tombs dating from the 1st century BC to the 1st century AD. 
Also known as the archaeological site of al hijir the tombs and monuments were cut directly into the sandstone, and it was the second largest city built by the Nabataeans after Petra. The Nabataeans were highly advanced people with impressive archaeological and agricultural techniques that many people have never heard of before. They were famous for their wells and rainwater tanks carved into the rock that are still functional to this day. Before they were annexed by the Roman Empire, these nomadic people flourished thanks to their monopoly on the spice trade route. Everything had to go through them as they ran the territory between the Arabian and Mediterranean seas. Caravans full of peppercorn, ginger, sugar, cotton, you name it, passed through Hegra. The Nabataeans also became suppliers of frankincense and myrrh, which were aromas used in religious ceremonies. The society is largely a mystery to scholars, despite flourishing for centuries. Much of the history of Hegra was lost after the Romans arrived, and was only mentioned by travelers and pilgrims on their way to Mecca. They didn't leave behind any written record, so everything we know is only from people who mentioned them in the past. Archaeologists and historians lament that they did not leave behind any mythological texts either, to better understand who they were and what they believed in. According to Islamic texts later on, the Nabataeans were punished by Allah for worshipping idols and were struck by earthquakes and lightning. Many people believe the place is cursed, which has helped to preserve it, and the government was not big on promoting ancient archaeological sites. Now, however, all that has changed, and Saudi Arabia is granting permission and easy access to people who want to visit the site. What we know about the city and the people who lived there is just scratching the surface. Over 10 historic languages have been found inscribed around the area, and this powerful region is believed to have been instrumental to the beginning of the Arabic language. Number 6. Forgotten Memorials Michael Woodward, a Nottingham University Hospital's maintenance worker with an archaeology degree, recently discovered a collection of forgotten World War I memorial plaques at the Queen's Medical Center in the UK. The plaques apparently remained hidden in plain sight for years as Woodward walked past them daily. He eventually took notice of them and began studying them, and it was only then that he realized their significance. Why the plaques were lost remains a mystery, according to Woodward, who spoke with Nottinghamshire Live following the discovery. A lot date from before the NHS, he explained, adding it's poignant as well, as it's exactly 100 years ago they were dedicated during the Spanish flu pandemic in 1920, and Remembrance Sunday as well. For those who don't know, Remembrance Sunday is a British holiday dedicated to commemorating British military and civilian service members who served in World Wars I and II and subsequent conflicts. Following World War I, beds were endowed in memory of groups and individuals at the General Hospital, which occupied the site prior to the present-day NHS establishment. Plaques that originally hung above their dedicated beds were eventually relocated when the hospital's ownership changed hands. Five of them, which the Imperial War Museum had listed as missing for quite some time, were found on a wall near the hospital's main entrance, hidden in plain sight. Number 5. Rare White Bat Shortly before Halloween, staff at the Denver Zoo noticed a rare white bat flying around in its bat cave exhibit. The specimen, which was captured on video at the cave's melon feeding station, is a leucistic Seba's short-tailed bat. The term leucism encompasses a series of conditions resulting in partial pigmentation, leaving an animal with a pale, patchy, or white appearance. It's not the same as albino, which is a complete absence of melanin. Creatures with leucism lack the characteristic red eyes, vision problems, and certain other traits and ailments that come with albinism. There are not many confirmed cases of leucism in bats, but experts believe it may be more common than the records show. Reports of white bats have been made all over the world, and plenty of these nocturnal and elusive creatures undoubtedly go undetected by the human eye. At the same time, leucism in bats is, generally speaking, rare. Employees at the zoo named the new bat Shikaka after a leucistic bat in the movie Ace Ventura Pet Detective. I love that movie. Number 4. Glow-in-the-dark mushrooms There are nearly 100 known bioluminescent mushroom species in the world. The newest one, called Roridimuses phyllostachytis, or something like that, was just discovered in northeastern India as part of a scientific project to document mushroom species. The India Times reported that the fungus was spotted along a stream in August during monsoon season. It's one of many newly identified species out of the several hundred that the team of scientists found. 
Locals already knew of R. phyllostachytis, which they call electric mushrooms. A resident led the researchers to it in the middle of the night and instructed them to put their torches out. Several of the light-emitting mushrooms, which grow on dead bamboo branches, instantly began to glow. A report on the team's findings notes that only the mushroom stalks are bioluminescent, which tipped them off to the possibility that it might be a new species. They took some samples back to their lab, and sure enough, their suspicions proved correct. Additionally, it's the first species of its genus discovered in India, and one of just a handful of growing fungi ever found in the country. But there are likely more out there, waiting to be identified and scientifically reported. Number 3. Bizarre Wartime Climate Anomaly over 8.5 million soldiers died during World War I, and a new study shows that there was another big factor that contributed to the death toll. In what scientists called a 1 in 100 year climate anomaly, a unique weather system lingered in Europe from 1914 to 1919, substantially increasing the war's casualties. The atypical weather system, which coincidentally was most active right before or during some of the war's most major battles, came with torrential rain and cold temperatures, causing battlefields to become waterlogged. Some of the highest death tolls were incurred on these battlefields, including Verdun, the Somme, and Ypres, where many soldiers died from disease or drowned in mud holes. Others stood in water for days, developing a painful condition called trench foot because you can never get dry or developed frostbite. The dangerous conditions that the thick mud created also slowed soldiers and their horses down and made it difficult to move equipment. Research on the climate anomaly claims that the uncharacteristically harsh conditions worsened the war by making the environment more inhospitable. The weather system is also blamed for worsening the 1918 influenza pandemic, commonly called the Spanish flu, and possibly even starting it by altering the migration behavior of ducks which are known to carry the H1N1 influenza virus. The ducks, which normally migrated to Russia every year, stayed put, putting them and their feces in close proximity to human populations, where they likely contaminated the excessive bodies of water created by the uncharacteristic downpours resulting from the climate anomaly. While it's unknown whether the strange weather system caused the pandemic, and while it's difficult to calculate the true extent of its damage on the war, it was, at the very least, very bad timing. Number 2. Pompeii Victims Only a relatively small portion of the ruins at Pompeii have been thoroughly excavated, meaning archaeologists will undoubtedly continue to make new discoveries as they continue to dig at the site. But some finds are nevertheless surprising, including the recent discovery of human remains likely belonging to a rich man and his slave. The pair, who apparently managed to escape the initial rainfall of ash, died the following morning in a subsequent volcanic blast that most likely vaporized them. Like the many others who died at Pompeii, they were then buried in more ash. Archaeologists found the two individuals beneath six feet of ash and pumice on the outskirts of the ancient city, at what was once an elegant seaside villa with picturesque views of the Mediterranean Sea. The men perished in a side room off an underground tunnel called a cryptoporticus, which connected to the villa's ground-level floor. They likely sought shelter in there from the ash blanketing the landscape, not necessarily knowing that the materials would infiltrate every nook and cranny of the dwelling. The team poured liquid chalk into the cavities the decomposed bodies left behind, capturing the ill-fated duo's terrifying last moments alive. One of the men, aged between 18 and 25 years old, bore evidence of spinal compression, possibly resulting from hard labor. This, along with his presence at a wealthy person's home, indicate that he may have been a slave. The other man appeared in much healthier condition, despite being between 30 and 40 years old when he died, with remnants of an expensive wool cloak underneath him. He was likely the homeowner. Excavations are ongoing at Pompeii, despite the park's current closure due to COVID-19, meaning more exciting discoveries may make headlines in the near future. Number 1. Water on the Moon At the end of October 2020, NASA confirmed the discovery of water on the moon. The space agency's Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy, nicknamed SOFIA, detected the H2O on the sunlit lunar surface of Clavius Crater in the moon's southern hemisphere. 
The discovery, which amounts to the equivalent of a 12-ounce bottle of water, suggests that water molecules are present on parts of the moon that people didn't expect, the lit side versus the cold, dark areas. Sophia identified the water in a 35 cubic foot area of soil. In a newly published study in the journal Nature Astronomy, scientists explained that while the discovery changes their understanding of the distribution of water molecules on the moon, they do not believe that the presence of water is a global phenomenon. In other words, it's probably not found everywhere on the moon. The amount of water the researchers found is not much. To give you an idea, the dry Sahara Desert has 100 times more water than what Sophia found on the moon. Still, the discovery is major, and now experts have new questions to answer, including how the moon's water is created and how it withstands the harsh lunar environment. Scientists had long suspected that there was water on the moon, but they only detected it in ice form in the two decades leading up to the new discovery. Previous missions also failed to determine whether the substance thought to be water molecules was genuine H2O or a similar chemical compound called hydroxyl. Along with the news, NASA stated that it plans to put astronauts back on the moon in 2024 and to establish a consistent presence there by 2030. Are you excited? I'm excited. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Bye!